Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a neat little trick to uh, go ahead and automatically place SAMs based on local elevation. So what we have here is that we have a pretty simple map. Uh, right now it's quite empty. And what we want to do is we want to come up with some sort of way to place SAMs in such a way that makes a little bit more sense. Obviously, we could come in here and use a random placement algorithm or something along those lines. But what I thought we'd do instead is I thought we'd analyze all of the terrain, find the highest points in that terrain, and then choose whether or not to place a SAM there. Seems like a pretty cool process, but it actually works fairly well. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make sure everything is a little easier to see here. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit so it's simple. And we're going to start from the beginning. First thing we're going to want to do is we're going to establish what the lowest and highest both latitude and longitude are going to be. So I'm going to start by saying local min lat. And uh, I already checked the latitude recently. It looks like it's uh, 32, I believe. Then we'll go ahead and say local max latitude. And we're going to set this to say 35, which again is going to be the highest. We're going to try to put most of these in Syria if we can help it. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and set the minimum longitude, which I've written myself a little note here is 36. And then I'm going to go ahead and establish what the maximum longitude. Again, we're just basically defining a gigantic box that we're going to be doing our search for the highest point in. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define what the local peak latitude is. And again, this is going to be the location x and y to where the highest altitude we were able to detect is. In this case, I'm just going to set it to 1. And I'm also going to do the same thing for longitude. So that's going to get us pretty well set up for our base. This is going to be our farthest left, farthest right, I should say, farthest down, farthest up, farthest left, farthest right. Now all I have to do is I'll go ahead and create a new variable for what our peak elevation is going to be. Now the way I want to do this is I want to create a table of points that are above a certain altitude. If those points we'd like to use, we can go ahead and randomly pick which one of those points we actually want to keep. So to do that, I'm going to have to create myself an empty table. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and just make it nice and boring. I'm just going to call it something like uh, high points. And then I'm also going to keep track of how large that table gets. So I'm just going to say something like this, nice and easy. And obviously, a table starts at a size of zero. Now, some folks who are uh, kind of veterans of Lua will point out the fact we can use I pairs for this as opposed to doing a count. But when I first learned computer science back in my day, our uh, tables had to be a certain size and everything had to have its own iterator and everything like that. So there are other ways to do this. So let's go ahead and set up our search routine now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a for loop within a for loop, also known as a nested loop. So I'm going to say for la, let's just call that for latitude, uh, equals min lat, which simply says start from our minimum latitude, which is going to be the bottom of our screen, comma, go to our maximum latitude. You can see what I'm doing here. And then we have the most important contact. This is going to be how often we're going to search. You know, are we going to search every 0.01 latitude? Are we going to search every 0.1 latitude? This is going to have a massive impact in the performance of this. So in this case, I'm going to set it to 0.1. Then I'm going to type in the word do. I like to give myself a little bit of room, and I'm going to type in my end down there. Next, we're going to create ourselves another for loop inside this one that is going to be responsible for going left to right at each one of these latitudes going around. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to say for low, why not, right? Equals min low, again, you should probably see the pattern here, to max low, comma, and we'll do the same thing with point 0.1. Now, if we wanted to, we could go ahead and make this more granular by putting it to point 0.01, but it's going to make the script take a very long time to execute. So now that we have a point that we're iterating through every single point here, actually, by the way, we should be more efficient. We should go ahead and type in the word end as well. We now have to check the elevation of each one of those new points. Doing that's pretty easy. I'm just going to type in local elevation, oh, watch my spelling, equals world get elevation. And now what we have to do is feed it the latitude and longitude that we're currently at. So I'm going to say latitude equals la, longitude equals low. And now we're just going to get the latitude, the elevation of that particular point as it runs that script. So uh, now we just need to make a decision. Um, we're going to say if elevation is bigger than peak elevation. Now you're probably sitting there going, wait, what? So if you remember, we set our peak elevation to 1. When we check the first item, we're going to be determining whether or not that particular 1 is greater than a particular point. So I'm going to do uh, greater than peak elevation. Then we're going to say then, actually say do, then peak, uh, remember peak lat equals la, peak lon equals 
low. And now I can end this, and now we have a neat function that can actually go in and determine and find the highest point in our entire place. Now if we wanted to, we could just come down here, and we could do something neat like the print uh, peak lat comma peak lawn. And now if I run the script, assuming I didn't make any goofies, which I do all the time, whoop, I'll line 23. Ah, that was silly. Somebody's been using a different programming language. Ta-da! Oh, almost. Um, I got excited, sorry. Like I said, different programming language. There we go. And now we've determined where the highest point is. Now, if we wanted to, of course, we could come in here and do uh, send edit. And we could do add unit. Let's go ahead and get some details here. We could see type equals facility. We could do side, obviously we're using test as my side. We could say name equals highest point Sam. And then of course we could come in here and we could say, uh, let's see, DBID is gonna equal one, two, three. Latitude, of course, since we already calculated it, it's gonna be peak lat. Longitude is simply gonna be peak long. And let me just uh, use some common sense real quickly here. Uh, what did I wanna do? Did I wanna, no, I'm not gonna include that. Boop. And now if I go ahead and run this again, assuming I didn't make any boo-boos, we now have a SAM site at the highest point within this particular zone. If I actually go check that real quick, let's see exactly what the highest point is. Um, 810 feet, that does not sound correct. So that means, I'm just looking through my notes real quick. Ah, I knew you guys were yelling at me. I just couldn't hear you, I'm sorry. We forgot to actually reset the new highest point when we ran this function. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that again. Minimize, ah, bingo, it worked perfectly. So now this is the highest point in that tire longitude and latitude region, which actually is pretty cool if you think about it. Now, I know you saw a minute ago when I was sitting there putting these little tables together and you're going, so what are you gonna do with all this? Well, why don't we just make a group of high altitude SAMs rather than just the one? So let's go ahead and I'll leave this in here for a second. So what I'm gonna do this time is I'm actually gonna clean this stuff out. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna ask a simple question. If elevation is greater than, uh, what do you think, 2,000 meters? I think that's fair. Then I'm simply going to insert that coordinate pair into a table. Remember how we created that table a little while ago? There it is. We're gonna do, um, what do we call it, high points, high points. And we're gonna be inserting la comma low. <laughs> so we're inserting a pair into our table here. And that's all there really is to it. Now, of course, I'm gonna keep track of how many of these I have done so far. And again, this step is unnecessary if you wanna use the I pairs feature. This just comes from uh, programming in the old days when things were a little bit different. So don't worry about that too much. So now what we've done is we've created a table of every point in this region that is over 2000 meters. Pretty cool, huh? Now all we have to do is come down here and create a new loop that will go ahead and zip through all that real quickly. So let's get old school, we'll say 4x equals 1. Uh, stop when you hit over 1,000. Remember, over 1,000 is just how many. Uh, we're going to increment by 1, do. So let's see here. The first thing we're going to have to do is we're just going to grab this, grab here, and hit end. The only thing we have to do differently, and this is where you have to be very cautious, is we need to make sure our latitude is gonna be the equivalent of our position in highest points at position one. And then our longitude, remember position one is latitude, then our longitude is going to be highest points of X of position two. So remember, these are gonna be position one, position two, and you're gonna have a huge list. So what this is going to do now is it's going to place one of these units everywhere there is that point inside of that list. Now we have to cross our fingers, there's not a lot of points in Syria that are over 2,000 meters. Otherwise, this could lag quite a bit, but that's part of the fun, right? So um, the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna come down here, dot, dot, X. I just wanna clean this up a little bit. Run, whoop, highest points. That means I spelled something wrong. High points, high points, high points. Sorry about that. High points. Ta-da! And now we have a group of SAMs placed at the highest points in this region. Pretty cool, huh? Actually not the highest points, any point that's over 2000 meters. 
So that's actually pretty darn cool, if you ask me. Now, you're probably sitting there going, well, that's pretty cool. Can you go too far? Uh, we can always go too far. So let's do that. Let's say we want to set this up so that every time we run the scenario, this function gets fired. So it randomly places some SAMs at some high altitudes. However, we don't want it to put a SAM at every high altitude because that would make things predictable. So let's add some randomness to this. So I'm going to come down here and I'm just going to create something nice and random. Uh, dice. That seems pretty easy. We'll say math.random. And we'll say between, I don't know, 1 and 1,000. That's pretty fair. Then we're simply going to say if dice is less than or equal to uh, 15, let's say 15, then we'll place our SAM site. Otherwise, it won't place our SAM site. Now, if we run this function now, there's a good chance no SAM sites will be spawned. No, not at all, because when we rolled the dice that 20 times, none of them came up less than 15. Remember, our dice is 1,000 wide. So uh, let's add some more points, shall we? There we go. So now it randomly placed these two. If I run this function again, it's going to place more SAMs at those high altitudes. Pretty cool, huh? So now what if you're like, well, this is pretty cool, but uh, can we go too far? Well, there's a lot of different ways you could go too far. Remember these two little values here, which determine how granular our search for high altitude is? What happens if we added a zero? Ha 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 ha. That shouldn't surprise you. Because we've increased the granularity of this search, we've caused it to find more points. And therefore, even though we need to roll 15 or less on a 1,000-sided dice, we're going to hit it quite a bit more often. This is also a fun way topo topographically, hey, I landed it, that you can go ahead and find all these high points in this particular environment. Notice, by the way, you can do this in reverse. You could use this to lay mines in an ocean as well, if you're so inclined. Hopefully this video has been uh, relatively valuable. I'll leave this uh, script up here. Maybe I'll try to make the text up a little bit bigger and just so you can all kind of like see it. Again, this was just a fun little project. I thought I'd try to take a crack at myself to see if this would be possible. And it could be used anywhere in the world. The important thing here is you have to make sure you set this in meters and that it actually makes sense. You know, the last thing in the universe you'd want to do is to set this to one. Because if you did that, you get basically every point in an entire country, unless your country is Death Valley, which is not a country. I know it's a place basically in the western United States. So it's worth noting and again earlier in the video you saw where we actually found the highest point in place radars. One of the things I've actually used this for is to place early warning website or websites just regular sites I should say not websites and that works very very effectively also for that purpose. All right hopefully this is helpful if you have any questions uh, toss them down in the comments otherwise enjoy.